So we're doing question 5.4 right now, and this is a, these are tricky questions though, that students often struggle with. Um, this question is explain how sexual reproduction can eventually lead to evolution in offspring. And there's actually two main parts of this, which you want to make about 50-50 in terms of your proportions of your answer. So sexual reproduction is one part, as well as um, uh, evolution in offspring is the other part. Okay, so the key thing is that we need to know that sexual reproduction leads to variation. That's very important. So um, we're going to talk about sexual reproduction first. So sexual leads to variation. Okay, so that's the way that uh, sexual reproduction leads to evolution. It's about all about the variation. And this variation uh, can be, is, is associated with sexual reproduction, and there are three main reasons why. Firstly, independent assortment during meiosis. contributes to variation. That's the first thing. So if you're unsure what independent assortment is, what that is is that when you have, uh, during metaphase one, you have the lining up of homologous chromosomes, well they randomly line up. There's a 50% chance they line up on the left hand side and a 50% chance that they line up on the right hand side. And this actually matters because if it lines up on the left hand side, then these cells are going to be, these cells on the left are going to contain these particular alleles, which might be say uh, red alleles. Let's say, but then the ones on the right, they might have green alleles, so that those cells will be different. And depending on uh, which of those gametes gets fertilized, and that will have a different result. So that's independent assortment. The second one is called crossing over. Contributes to variation. So crossing over contributes to variation, and um, what this is, is also during meiosis as well. So the way that this contributes to variation is by, is during uh, the, um, the prophase of meiosis one as well. You have the lining up of homologous chromosomes, and then these, these legs that actually cross over each other like that. And what that does is that as it pulls it apart, you essentially have the transfer of genetic material from one chromosome to another. So those are, those are the first two. The final one is fertilization. And fertilization is a joining of a male and a female gamete. And because uh, the, those two gametes already have variation displayed in them due to, firstly, the crossing over, as well as the independent assortment. But um, this allows a joining of different alleles, which might not even be present in the same individual, um, which further increases uh, this variation. So those are four points that you could do, okay? Remember that this is a long question, so we're looking for about four to five points um, for both sexual reproduction and four to five points for evolution. So let's talk about evolution now. So in regards to evolution, we've talked about variation occurring due to these three processes. The next thing that, that we need to talk about um, is the fact that um, organisms show variation and then organisms with certain traits might be, cer might be more adapted to particular environments. With advantageous traits, we'll have better chance of survival. And in fact, we can even preface this um, with a couple of other points that I probably neglected to mention. But if we talk about just up here, we can talk about the fact that um, if there are many different organisms, that it creates a struggle survival, a struggle to survive because of limited resources. Okay, so we talked about um, how we've had this point in regards to evolution as well as about advantageous traits, uh, like organisms with advantageous traits will have a better chance of survival. But the important thing when it comes to evolution is that these advantageous traits must be heritable, they must be able to be given to the offspring.
these traits are heritable, will be passed on to offspring. Okay. Good. Okay, so if they're passed on to the offspring, then as you as time progresses, then more of these offspring will contain the advantageous trait, and those and those individuals who do not have that trait, um, they will be their number will decrease. Like say, for example, if it was a giraffe. So the, those giraffes with long necks, then more and more of the offspring would have long necks. And any giraffes which had short necks, they would die off because they wouldn't be able to receive their food. So, individuals who display the advantageous trait would increase in number. And look, the final thing that you can say about this is that evolution has occurred when all members of the population display this advantageous trait. display this advantageous trait. And there you go. So if we count up the number of marks that we didn't have, that we had, remember that we wanted about 50% of the marks to be in regards to sexual reproduction and the other 50% due to evolution. So we had about one, two, three, four marks here for sexual reproduction. And then down here we had one, well actually one here in regards to the struggle survival. Um, this is also known as natural selection. Um, and we also had uh, organisms with advantageous traits um, having a better chance of survival. You just need to outline these very step by, in a very step-by-step -step process. And so we had five there. So if we add that all up, then we have about nine points, which should give us the allocated marks. Good. There are plenty more YouTube videos for you to check out, just click on the links below. If you'd like to download the questions, as well as the answers, make sure to like us on Facebook first. And finally, if you'd like to find out how I got a 7 in high-level IB biology, make sure to check out our website in the bottom right-hand corner. Thanks.